And this is important. You should be familiar with this concept of uh, empirical therapy and definite therapy. Empirical antibiotic therapy, we don't know uh, the pattern diagnosed, and of course we don't know any resistant pattern. We just guess. But then, in some cases, we have the definite antibiotic therapy. We do know the pattern, and we do know the resistance pattern. But more than 98% of the therapies worldwide are empirical. So doctors a lot guess when they put in uh, antibiotics. And this is an old example. This is patient with pneumonia. And this is our pneumonia patients in infectious disease department in Sweden. These are old figures, but the same now, almost the same. And here is uh, different bacteria. Here is one bacteria causing 66%. Another bacteria, of course, a 50% and 6%, 6.5%. And what's that kind of bacteria causing uh, uh, pneumonia? This is a specialized ward. We do know the patient got pneumonia. <coughs> well, this bacteria is the so called unknown. We don't know. We don't have any culture. Uh, we just think it's pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia. Here, is pneumococci, the most common bacteria causing pneumonia. You do understand my message here. That's the real world of uh, infectious diseases. Of course, we need more and fast diagnostics, more culture and non-culture technique. So maybe we, you can put it like this, the uh, antibiotic treatment trying to catch uh, the pathogen. So when we have a patient, empiric treatment with antibiotics, when should we suspect a, a resistant infect, uh, infection or ignore it? And the consequences, if we suspect it too much, we will have over-treatment and the resistance will go on. If we ignore it and you have a severe infection, maybe the patient will die. So what should you do? It's crucial that you know your resistant rates and patterns in general in the area and the country where you're working. You must know your local resistance. We want to use clinically useful risk factors so we know before the resistant taste in three days which patient have a resistant infection. The patient always think, oh, this will not happen to me. I have, will not have a resistant infection. But now, with the information about the individual risk of antibiotic treatment, now the patient is concerned. So the new um, message, before we talked about the virus, of course you know that antibiotics are not effective against virus. We only treat bacteria. But now we think the distinction is bacteria, bacteria, because not all bacterial infections need to have antibiotic treatment. Of course, not uncomplicated. So I will not go into any detail, but if you have severe life-threatening infection, of course, we treat antibiotics. I don't go into every example, but you can put a list as this, and you uh, come down to less and less severe infection. Ah, you have not so much effect. And here antibiotics were no effect, but it's still bacterial infection, upper airway infection, tonsillitis without a special streptococcus pyogenes bacteria, acute bronchitis, cough, and so on. You have no effect of uh, antibiotics. So at last, is antibiotics needed? The physician should ask, in case of uh, suspicion of infection, is antibiotics needed? Can I use alternative treatments, drainage? Of course, the severity of the infection and the, uh, and the guidelines always use available guidelines. Uh, which diagnostic workload have I to use? 
is a resistant infection possible or probable in case of uh, antibiotic use, additional treatment again, and control of the focus of infection. Sometimes in the hospital we have patients not getting cured with antibiotics and it's often caused of a localized infection. We don't have control for, or we call it metastatic infection. They could have a bacteria in the blood, cause an infection, for example, in the heart or other parts of the body. And if we don't get control of this localized infection, we cannot cure uh, the patient just with antibiotics. Sometimes surgery, often surgery, is needed. And this is, of course, the choice and the duration. But also as a patient or a parent, as a lay uh, person, you should ask, in case of a suspicious infection, is antibiotics needed? You should do that during the consultation with the doctor or physician. Is there an alternative or additional treatment uh, about the choice and the side effects of antibiotics and the duration? More and more uh, we see that you can use a shorter and shorter courses of therapy. So, to end with WHO again, what can we do on a global scale? We do this to improve awareness of antibiotic resistance. This is why I stand here uh, this evening. To strengthen knowledge through surveillance. Surveillance of what? How many resistant bacteria do we have in the country? How much antibiotic do we use? To reduce the incidence of infection, how can we do that? We can stop the spread of resistant bacteria, for example, in uh, hospitals, so-called infection prevention control. We can use vaccines, immunization. We do see measles outbreak in the U.S. now because of people not want their children to get a vaccination against measles. Now we can what I talked a lot about, the optimized use of antimicrobial agents. And this is the topic of the next lecture. My friend Frederick will talk about this. This is vaccines against pneumococcus uh, causing pneumonia. And here it was introduced. And here we have penicillin susceptible disease. And here you have penicillin non-susceptible disease, but the vaccination have effect against both. So this is, of course, the clever modern way of uh, improving and uh, reducing the infection rate. Antibiotics is a very old-fashioned, not so good way of uh, doing that. Yeah, this is two boys with um, pneumonia in the... Uh, the name of the hospital was hospital number second in Dushanbe, the capital of Tajikistan. We had a project uh, with pneumonia, but they are they happen so healthy. Yeah.